These are the stories of Athens as told by the people of Athens. Welcome to the Ath History Podcast. I just feel like I belong. Today's conversation features Lemuel Life LaRoche. Hello. Hello, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming in and Long having time a conversation. Coming. We're here. I know, I know. It's happening. It's, it's happening. It's inclement weather, but it is bright <laughs> in this room. You know what I mean? So we're good. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. So how do you see yourself in Athens, Georgia? First, uh, you know, it's that's a very interesting question, and you know my name is Lemuel LaRoche, um, also known in this community as Life or Life de Grio, and um, I'm the guy walking around with a lot of locks, you know, in my hair. One of the many people walking around. So I like to say I wear many locks or I wear many hats. So how I see myself in this community, it's loaded because um, I understand various different sectors of the community. So I would say I might see myself as this person in this community, in this community I see myself as something different. My passion is youth, youth development, engaging youth, taking everything that was missing in my life, and finding a way to develop opportunities so that the young people in this community and communities that I engage in don't make some of those same mistakes and don't fall into some of those paths. So in saying that, I think I see myself as, you know, a person that's just here to bring about um, this level of inclusiveness that, you know, I see is missing. Um, I'm privy to a lot of different dialogues that are going on in this community with our elders there's a lot of pain that haven't been addressed. So I see myself in some aspect of, um, I can't say we, they're allowed to feel that pain because they've experienced that because they've, you know, they went against the clan that marched down Broad Street. So who am I to come and say, oh man, that's the past, that's this, get over it? No. So you're allowed to engage that, but also see myself as how do we heal? How do we begin the healing process? Um, do we live in this space forever like i always say man is this permanent because if it's permanent then forget it we might as well just close shop now but if this is a temporary process if this is something that we're just moving through then how do we begin that healing process so i see myself um in that space in one community with youth i see myself as um and i'm getting older and older and i'm having my boys and my gray hairs are coming in so i'm not as cool as i used to be for a lot of the youth but with the youth i see myself as try to be that voice that they can at least um have confidence a level of trust that we can talk about because the work that i do speaks for my passion it speaks for what it is that i'm about so i i try to if anything build that level of trust with the youth and not necessarily duplicate me because I think um, um, I have flawed, but allowing them to take everything that we're doing, what they see as a need in this community, and take that to the next level. So I see myself as that visionary of saying, I know what one, because that's not my vision for Athens community, but I, I see what is missing. I see what are some of the things we can do to make it better, and how do I play I see myself as a person that plays my role. And I always say, I'm a small piece of a puzzle. What's your piece looking like? And when we put all the pieces together, then we can potentially see the clear picture. What do you see as your role? I see that role is as, like I just laid out, um, one, youth development, being that bridge that helps to bring various communities together. You know, right? Because people say, man, I don't trust that community. I don't trust. And it's like, do you know anybody in that community? That's the first thing. Do you know? Because if you don't know someone there, then of course there's, you're going to operate from, you know, hi historical, you know what I mean, experiences, which is not always kind, which is not kind. So I understand why there is a mistrust. But one of the steps of breaking a mistrust is 
beginning to have simple dialogue, simple conversations. So I see myself in some aspects as that bridge. So I'm, I'm able to see what's happening with the economic development. I'm able to see what's going on with the city manager. I'm able to have a relationship with the mayor, talk to commissioners, talk to various different community leaders, talk to the kids that's on the ground, talk to the cats in the communities that is trying to figure out it's in survival mode. And so I'm able to see this community from all of those different lenses and then trying to figure out a way to piece things together. So when I'm hearing Athens have all these new jobs coming in, but then on the other end, I'm hearing somebody say, I can't find a job to save my life. And I got to drive 30 minutes away to get a job. There is a disconnect. There is a miscommunication. So the University of Georgia being the elephant in the room and me working in the School of Social Work at the university with the Center for Social Justice, how do I now begin to piece all of these broken or not broken as the mayor said the best the islands how do we build bridges with all of these islands and at least have not just a one-way street but a two-way you know road or highway coming in and out of those islands and i see myself as uh helping to build that bridge or helping to be a part of that bridge if that makes any sense at all <laughs> it does okay. it does i'm hearing you say that you see yourself as a deeply intentional connector mm -hmm. who is genuinely committed to listening and then making choices that grow out of being responsive to what people are actually sharing with you, not what you think people are sharing with you. That's well said. That's exactly what it is. And that takes time to build um, those type of communications. It's not something that happens in one conversations and one setting in one meeting, in one group meeting, one community meeting, it takes time because we're trying to undo, you know, we're trying to undo century. <laughs> you know, I talked to my students the other day about who was Elijah Clark, the Clark County was named after, you know, who was Elijah Clark? How did we get here? You know, have we resolved the issues we've had with the First Nation, with the natives that a lot of this area was taken from. So, and it was built upon. So we, there's layers of, and layers of mistrust, of wrong that was done that needs to be corrected. But then while at the same time, there also needs to be an area of, let's begin to at least have some authentic dialogues and not just stay there. Cause we have a, we do a lot of talking in town, but also begin to move the dialogue into action. You know, because a lot of the wrong that we see in this community, a lot of times we put it on community folks. You say, well, we, you know, there are all these resources and stuff out here. You should be able to just go ahead and get it. And we put it upon them to come up with solutions to address and not look at the policies that were drawn in place, you know, you know, decades prior <laughs> that got us into this mess. You know, not just locally, but even nationally as a nation so there is a lot of that level of untrust and mistrust that we have to begin to unpeel and then say let's begin to one have dialogues and let these dialogues move into into thoughtful and into honest actions action items and action agendas and um on, on so many levels i see that is happening that dialogue is beginning to take place um, then, of course, we take steps forward, three back, ten forward, eight back, you know, then, you know, and we, and we see how it plays out on the school board and and, the, and, the and superintendent, we see how it plays on with different commissioners. And so we're going to have, and this is not to say, oh, man, that, that contention is, is not, almost necessary to have deeper dialogues to go to the root of what we see the issues are so that we can actually begin to move forward collectively as a city, a city that has a vision for moving forward, the whole Envision Athens kind of idea, and not, we all, I want to move forward, but I'm still isolated in my mind of what I see are some of the issues, and I'm not willing to, you know I mean, to, 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 go, to go vert to that side. I'm not ready to go there. And I understand that there are many voices and many political agendas, uh, religious agendas, you know, I mean, personal agendas, land agendas, <laughs> items. There's so much of that happening here that can we actually have an honest dialogue? You know, I mean, can I say, you know, this is a business interest, but this business interest may override 
what we see as a moral. <laughs> you know, it's not just about money. It's about we have real issue here. How do we address that? And if you're a commissioner and you represent a district that don't support your views, be it left, leftist, right, however you look at it, when you're supposed to represent your, you know, you're reflecting the voice of your district, we have a lot of those kind of issues, I think, going on locally that I think it just takes us time to say, let's really talk honestly and let's really begin to see where we move and how do we move forward. How do you think Athens, Georgia sees you? You know, I, I feel, you know, it, 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 it varies, right? Um, I think in some communities, uh, people see me as the guy that just do chess, right? And it's like, in some aspect, it's like, maybe I haven't done a good job of really, you know, articulating exactly what it is that we do. I mean, because um, people say, oh, man, chess is cute. You know, y'all play chess. And it's like, man, chess is just the coat. <laughs> That's just the coat that we wear. You know, uh, the work that I do is about youth development. And chess is only about 10, 15 percent of that. You know, we got debates. We got book clubs. We have entrepreneurship. We have, you know, traveling. We going overseas where it's a youth development. It's a youth, you know, developing the next generation of active, engaged citizens that understand how local governments work, how policies work, how. But I don't think people see that. People see that's the guy that plays chess that needs a couple of dollars here and there. So I'm gonna give a hundred dollars. I'm gonna give five hundred dollars. I'm gonna give you know. And it's like, and, I, and all of that is appreciated. But the deeper layer is, you know, it's really about how do we actually really bring this city together. So I think that's one vision. Um, you might have certain a, a, a elements in the community that say he's an outsider. This is like many outsiders that come in get a name for themselves, you know, prop themselves up to the next level, then go for whatever opportunities they see out there that, you know, use Athens as a base to climb. And then I get the accolades and I'm out. You know what I mean? So I think there are some that sees me through that lens to say, you know, again, he, he means well, but he's still that outsider that's just there to prop his name and, and move forward. So I think that element is all, also exists. And I think from the youth, um, there are others that still are kind of like, what is your agenda? Because mm. I think it's a lot of, because I got an agenda. So what's your agenda? Mm. <laughs> you know? And it's like, I really want to see this community move forward. Mm. Right? So it's like, you're giving all these, the conference is free. The events you're doing is free. You're operating off a shoestring budget. What do you really want? You want to be a commissioner? You want to be a mayor? You want to be a... And it's like, nah, I really... I got children growing up in this community, right? Like you, right? I have two boys growing up in this community, and I have to do everything in my power to make this a community they can actually grow up in they, that sees them not as a charity, you know, not as, you know, the way we've been branded through you know, I pop through, you know, national lens of, you know, black men being yada, yada, yada. I don't have to explain it. But, you know, so I have a duty to really build a community um, that in my adolescence, I didn't get a chance to see that I almost, you know, I did end up, you know, again, incarcerated, um, not necessarily incarcerated. I end up, you know, in, in jail, you know, making some, some bad choices. Um, but, to develop a community that can actually catch um, another brilliant young mind that's just going to sit in some prison somewhere. So I, I, I have to play my role in developing that community, building those relationships. So um, I think the community sees me through various different lens. Some just see as a poet, you know, because mm -hmm. I am a poet. So others are like, man, he's a dynamic poet. And... Um, so I, it's, it's many different lenses in how the community sees me. Others sees me as, you know, a trustful, trustworthy. And that's, if anything, what I try to portray. Like, you can trust. I'm going to be about my word. I say I'm going to develop this, and I'm going to make it happen. Whether I have the resources or not, we're going to make it happen. And I think in some camps, people respect that. And, you know, people, are, are, you know, admire that. And um, I'm, I'm just here to serve. <laughs> if I could sum it all up, I'm here to serve and to develop a better community for my children and all other children in Athens. Yeah. What led you to create Chess and Community? That same thing, what I, what I just said. Uh, when I came to University of Georgia, I came into Athens as a student. Mm -hmm. 
And if I was to be completely honest, Athens wasn't really on top of my list. Um, I went through so much in Macon, Georgia, that it was like I saw the need for youth development. Macon is a war zone in some aspects, but yet Macon is growing as well. And when I uh, dropped out of high school, eventually went back, graduated with a very low GPA, put on academic probation, started at Gordon College in Barnesville. So there were people that gave me those opportunities to kind of, okay, I'm going to give you an opportunity to see what you actually are working with. And then from there, transferred to University of Georgia um, to get my bachelor's and went on to get my master's. So I came into town as a student, like many other students. And But Athens wasn't my first choice. My first choice was Atlanta. My first choice was just going into other places. And I was like, UGA, I'll, I'll put UGA on the list. It was actually third on my list, but UGA called me first. And I was like, because it was Clayton, Georgia State, then University of Georgia. And University of Georgia, and I like to say it was my name, Lemuel LaRoche. <laughs> what is he, even though he sounds unique. Let's bring him in. And uh, But I came in here, and I just... I came in with what I already had, mm. which is that my father was always altruist. My father was a community guy. My father was all, everywhere he went, he was adored. He was loved because of his work with community. And so I was, I was just, as the old heads, you say, I'm going to chip off the old block. You know what I mean? So I came here with that. So I came to university. I didn't just stay there. I was like, man, when I started engaging in social work, that was my field. I started to see that right outside the University of Georgia. We got communities. I saw the poverty back in 2000 into 99 when I first got here. I'm like, how do we even exist knowing that this is going on around us? And I immediately just got into motion, developing programs at Whit Davis, de developing programs at different churches, developing organizations that brought University of Georgia student with the community as a exchange, doing service learning before the service learning became a thing, bringing busloads of kids to UGA campus from elementary schools and doing all that in, in, until about 1999, 2000, before it became a thing to do. So I came in here with that kind of spirit. And um, I think it was the work, and I don't think, when the work of really beginning to work interning with juveniles. I uh, started working at a Jackson, interning at Jackson Correctional, um, I.W. Davis, and looking at just, just the droves of black men. You know what I mean? All men, really, but majority black men who came from this community that talked about the lack of opportunities, how they got to the, joint, to the choices that they make, and a lot of them was on the way to do football numbers. 20 years, 15 years, 13 years, knowing they had children in this community, wives and significant others in this community, but there was only way out. And it's like, man, like, is the system broken or is the system operating the way it was designed to, right? Because if it's operating the way it was designed to, then, you know, we will continue to see this, you know, underclass, this, you know I me, mean, this low class that's supposed to clean everything up while everybody else just eat off of that. And, you know, so it was a level of frustration that, really visit me. And I was like, you know what? Okay, the next step is going to be to move from dealing with adults that were on the way to doing football numbers in prison into more. I started doing work with the Department of Juvenile Justice. And in doing that, I started to see a lot of those kids that were cycling through the same pattern that were on the way into some of these prisons based on the choices, not just choices, but systemic traps <laughs> that were laid in place and it was like okay i i got to i got to we got to do something we got work right and i know that oftentimes we can talk we can talk we can talk and a lot of kids ain't here and i don't want to hear that everybody come i got mentors everybody come in all these white kids coming into our schools and, and mentor and buy me sneakers and this and this and it's like yo we need some really serious programs that can help to give our kids a level of identity that can help them to really begin to look at structures around them, systems thinking, how these structures um, are involved in their lives. And it's like, how do I really bring this about? And in my days, there were the elders that we always sit down and teach me how to play chess. And I saw chess as the perfect vehicle for 
that level of systems thinking, allowing them to see st systems thinking ahead. And this is where I think a lot of the birth of chess and community to give youth those uh, opportunities, those obstacles to see their community from a lens and not just look at the community, become a part of it. This is why we bring them to the Mayors and Commissioners meeting. This is why they engaged in community service. This is why a lot of our programs are free that brings all these communities together. This is why we bring them to the Chamber of Commerce to really en enhance their social capital, allow them to see that the community is vast. You know what I mean? Not just how it looks in your mind. That is exists as well. But as a good friend, my brother Travis always say, a community is is something, a shared political destiny. Like, are we sharing our view and how we want to move forward? If not, we're really not a community. So the idea was to allow them to experience various different parts of the Athens community, but then prepping them and preparing them um, with the skill sets and where they can actually develop. And I think that was the birth, uh, the philosophy, the ideology behind why Chess and Community is and what it is the work that we're doing here. What are some of the biggest lessons you've learned? Oh, man, lessons. I can constantly take the lessons. Uh, you know, the one big lesson is, you know, do you build the building do you build the city before the mm. road or do you build the road before the city? <laughs> mm, I really try to stay out of these, but that one just got me. <laughs> mm. Right. And and I think it was uh, it's it's, you know, one thing that I've seen in this community, we have a lot of programs that get into six weeks, then kids get a certificate or somebody gets a certificate and then they move forward. And then there's no connection. And me understanding youth development, I understand that when so somebody's father's doing life in prison or 50, 40 years in prison, you, this child needs more than just a six weeks, three weeks program. <laughs> and it's a lot of that here with good intentions. So I can't say it was with good intentions, right? So one of the lessons, I came into this work with a level of passion that carried the work. And in doing that, um, this is where building the city before the road, where or building the road before the city, however we see it, um, I just came and started doing things without actually putting the solid structures in place, um, which made it so much harder for me to carry because now I'm making up for a lot of that. I have to identify strong board members um, that can actually help me to direct and carry, find strong fundraising stream or resource development. I came in with passion, and a lot of us, when we come to this work, we come with passion, and we see our counterparts, they come in with structures, with resources, so they have big budgets that they can do the work, sometimes few you know, clients, but big budgets, where I think the opposite is, I got huge clientele of kids, of communities, of families that we work with, but that budget of really carrying it and sustaining it, so I think, if anything... I would keep that level of passion, but learning to be a lot more patient in really developing the networks that I need before. Because I started around 2004, 2002 is when I started doing the work. Became a nonprofit in 2012, you know, after almost a decade of just doing the work. And I've noticed that it's who you know in the city. And that is your social capital, your social network. That is something that I did a terrible job in the beginning really developing that. And the latter, now, after I've done all the work and people see that I'm serious, people can take me serious. But um, I think that would be the work that I would, that was one of the biggest lessons to really build the social capital, build the network, and then begin to engage with that same passion. If there was one thing that you could say to the people of athens Clark County, what would you say? Man, that's a... Just one thing. <laughs> who who said it best, Dr. King? It's it's difficult because it's difficult only because I know all the people in Athens don't think with one mindset. You know, we we look at things from various different lens. Um, I would say we have to open up our channel of communication and not not just the the empty communication because we can we have a, you know we can talk all day long but we have to open up this channel of communication 
that can follow up into some really um, action items. Um, that's that's one. Open up our channel communication. Two, become a part of not just the dialogue, but the action that is taking place. Um, there is a lot of what's wrong in this community, what's not happening in this community, what is only happening instead of what do we do to actually begin to engage it. And and I can understand it. Um, when you're in survival mode, psh, <laughs> I can't, I can't. I don't have time to start thinking about speed laws and how to engage speed laws and how to organize a committee and how to develop this where there are those who have time for that. So um, so even me saying, you know, take time to be a part of the solution and not just talk about the problem is unfair in so many ways. But it's getting those who have the resources to really begin to display a little more compassion that if we live in a shared destiny and where we want to see Athens move forward, how does Athens move forward? And how do we move forward not just from my agenda, right? I think everybody's agenda is how do we improve or increase our financial stability. That's everyone's agenda. But what happens when we actually begin to move past that agenda and say, yeah, I want to increase my financial stability, but how do we make it where it works for everyone, where everyone have access to this and everyone would actually receive the same level of support <laughs> when they move through this channel? Um, and, I, I, and I think as a community, if we can really begin to display a level of passion and say, um, like I started a conversation, I have children growing up in this community, so... If I want to see a community work, I have to build that community with whatever knowledge I have. And what I don't know, I try to learn. I try to get mentors. Not try. I get mentors. And I try to I make those communication. If I want to know who the city manager is, I'm going to go meet the city manager. Um, we have a new police chief. I want to know who he is. I'm going to actually go out and see if he has time on his agenda to make lunch. Right. Our tax dollars are paying for all of this. So everyone is working for us. So let me utilize it in a way and not from a you work for me, not from that space. But how can I help to play my part in making things work in this city to get the chief's perspective, get, you know, the city manager's perspective, get the mayor's perspective, get the commissioner's perspective, get the school board's perspective, get the the uh the uh excuse me superintendent's perspective get uh, you know talk to you get your perspective of what you see is going on in the city and how can i help how can i be a part of that and i think if we began to move as a community or as individuals not as community as individuals with that and from that space we can begin to see an athens that can actually be a good model for the rest of georgia to kind of take a hold on, because I think we say it, Athens, we liberal, we this, we that. But as we begin to dig deeper into the data, the data doesn't reflect it. The data shows that we're just as have just as much issues as as any other place in Georgia, because we're not ready to really have that strong dialogue about poverty, about resources, about, you know, fairness in the city, you know, and then the reality that we're facing. Um, last statistics I want to throw when. We're talking about the median income for University of Georgia's families or students in 2017 is 131000 versus the median income for athens Clark County family is 34000 We have an issue. <laughs> we live in two totally different worlds. And sometimes just a conversation alone is like we acknowledge it. Now, how do we really begin to work? to improve this. And um, so I know it was a long conversation of what I would say, <laughs> but uh, yeah. it's it's a lot of layers. And we, as a community, I know we can do. I know what I've been able to do. I, not just I, me, I as a collective, we, which as a community, have been able to do with little to no resources. 
Like our budget is not even over, you know, 50,000, 20, 30,000, you know, because it's shoestring. And look at the impact we've been able to have on this community with a budget that small. So I know that with other, other nonprofits and other organizations with mega budgets, we can begin to actually do some things in the city that can actually begin to make a change and make a difference. But we ha- that passion has to still be there, and we have to be really committed and serious about the work that we're doing and not just the I factor. And um, I believe that we can do it, um, and I've shown that we can do it with nothing in the city, um, with very little resources. Um, so I know we can, we can do it. We, we can share a collective vision and this is why I, I I really support a lot what's going on with Envision Athens, with what Aaron and, uh, is doing. And I talk with uh, David Bradley with the Chamber of Commerce, and I see the direction that a lot of them want to go. And my thing become how do I how do I how do I lend myself to that, while at the same time um, bringing allowing them to see what some other areas of this community because it's one thing we know our social capital i know who i know i know who my friends are i know what we hang out with i know what we do i know what we discuss but what happens what is somebody who's literally making twelve thousand dollars a year can you even begin to think how do you function on that level and that is a reality what it calls for a country club in this in this town that is equivalent to somebody's salary annual salary so we have some issues that we need to address. And to address that, we need to have those real dialogues and not just get into, well, you know, the whole use people conversation. You well, you they just don't get it. You you're not taking advantage. You're lazy. You know, that narr- that national narrative and historical narrative that's been painted about certain communities when that's just not the reality. And I think to change it, to address it, we have to go into policy and to go into policy somebody at some point is going to always be, I don't, I'm, I'm being f- treated unfairly. And how do we move through that? And I love what you're doing, having these type of real dialogues, these type of stories that allows all of Athens to see through the lens of, I need to understand what a billionaire or a millionaire or a multimillionaire in Athens, uh, how he or she sees this community. I need to understand that. So that way I can understand, okay, what am I not seeing? And I need to also put myself in their shoes to say, I can understand why he or she would advocate for this because it aligns with their shared vision, their collective vision, their financial vision, you know. But then I need that person to also put themselves in the shoes of, you know, a he or she that is, you know, is barely making it, <laughs> that operates, you know, for six, twelve thousand dollars a year. And that is a reality in this town. Thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you so much for joining us today. Please remember, in athens Clark County, you belong. We'll see you next week. This podcast was produced by ACC Gov, by ACC Gov, by ACC Gov.